Do you find that you are dealing with depression and chronic pain and would like some relief? If so, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and depression survivor. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is Depression and Chronic Pain, Hell on Wheels. We're going to be talking about pain, so I thought I might do a joke about pain. Um, I loved baseball as a kid, but unfortunately I was really, really spacey. One day I was in the outfield spacing out, and suddenly I noticed the baseball. I wondered why it was getting bigger. And then it hit me. I kind of liked it. And uh, a follow-up on that, just remembered an old joke a five-year-old told me. What do they call a pig who has mastered karate? Pork chop. All right. Well, they're smiling over there. Hope you are too. So what is today's title? Oh yes, we talked about depression and chronic pain. Um, and you know, I just did a recent video called I Would Rather Have Physical Pain Than Mental Pain. Many of you might have seen it, in which I talked about how depression is so much worse than physical pain. Well, wouldn't you know when you open your big mouth and make a pronouncement like that, the universe says, oh yeah? So about a week after I made that video, I fell off my bike onto my left hip and really, really sprained something in there, uh, a couple of muscles. And the pain has been going on for now about nine weeks. Uh, I wake up in the night in pain. It's ruining my sleep. Uh, I can't really get on the bicycle anymore. And so it's really disrupted my life. And I said, hmm. You know, maybe I shouldn't have been so quick to jump to conclusions. Uh, maybe physical pain can be just as bad as emotional pain. So in pursuit of answering that question, I decided to do some research and learned a lot about chronic pain. And it turns out that it's a really serious problem in this country. Like one out of every three Americans deals with some sort of chronic pain and over 50 million are partially disabled by it. So what do we mean by chronic pain? Well, it's a constellation of symptoms uh, that occur long after a wound or an injury should have healed itself. Some people will say more than six months. Some people say more than three months, but whatever, it's going on way too long. And uh, it can lead to all sorts of problems like uh, depressed mood, fatigue, disrupted sleep like me. And, uh, you know, pretty soon it's profoundly interacting or changing your brain and nervous system. Now, what does this have to do with depression? Well, when we're depressed, we're kind of just barely getting by. Now, if you put, uh, throw chronic pain into the uh, equation, it becomes hell. The problem is, is that when you have physical pain, it increases your already present emotional distress, which in turn increases your physical pain, which then increases your emotional distress. In other words, it's a loop. It's an infinite loop, a spiral that you're going downhill with. Now, can this downward uh, cycle be broken? Well, yes, thank goodness, because there is a new field emerging in the medical world called pain psychology. It's coming about because people are realizing that if you can't get rid of the chronic pain, maybe you can find really good ways to cope with it. And in fact, uh, they've come up with this idea of a multidisciplinary approach. Well, of course, that's what we've been teaching on this channel, a body, mind, spirit recovery program. So the very same things that we've learned can be transferred over to the management of chronic pain. So let's start, for example, remember the three pillars of mental health recovery we talk about here? Set the intention to heal is number one. Well, in this case, imagine what your life would be like if you were free of chronic pain. How would you feel emotionally, physically, spiritually? What would you be doing? Create an image, a blueprint of a, you know, a painfully free life. Uh, and then the second thing is reach out for support. Well, what does this mean? Same as depression, family, friends, psych psychotherapist, also a medical doctor who can rule out structural or neurological problems because it doesn't make any sense to try to, you know, psychologically minimize your pain if you have something really physically wrong with you. And if those problems are ruled out, then you can see somebody called a physiatrist uh, who works with chronic pain and muscles and also a pain psychologist. The third thing, of course, is to treat your symptoms using a combination of mutually supportive therapies. Now, you'll see on the screen this diagram we've showed many times. It's a colored uh, diagram of five areas of therapeutic self-care, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, and lifestyle habits. If you email me, douglasblock at gmail.com, I will send you a copy of this, uh, of this diagram for free. And now we're going to learn exactly 
how it applies to physical pain. So let's talk about some of these coping strategies. Well, if you look under uh, lifestyle habits, uh, the first thing that comes up is structure and routine. Now, what this means is to stay as active as you can, uh, given the pain, and do things that take your mind off of your pain sensations. This could mean going for a walk, going to a movie with a friend, uh, going out to dinner. Uh, in other words, instead of dwelling on the pain or being alone and thinking about how miserable you are, distract yourself. And distraction, in this sense, is a really positive thing. It means not focusing inward, not focusing on your misery, but going out and doing something that takes your mind off the pain, getting out and about, and it's sooner or later, you're going to feel better if you do this. Under the heading of physical self-care, you can try some of the things, same things we do with depression. There's diaphragmatic breathing, deep breathing, uh, there's massage, chiropractic, physical therapy, and acupuncture. Acupuncture has been around a long time and has long been used for chronic pain. Also, there are medications that are non-narcotic, like CBD oil, which we've talked about in this channel, a mood stabilizer called gabapentin, and also some antidepressants. Under the heading of mental-emotional self-care, people have used things like hypnosis, affirmations, biofeedback to promote stress reduction, and cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Uh, you can use the latter to help you change the way you think about the pain and talk about your pain. So, for example, instead of saying, I can't take this anymore, you can say, well, I can barely take this, or the pain is barely bearable. That makes a big difference. Uh, you can also remember in terms of the way we think, not to compare yourself to somebody else. Don't say, well, so-and-so can move around and is active, you know, poor me. Maybe instead it's better to think to yourself, well, what can I do? Maybe I can be grateful for the parts of my body that are working and the blessings that I do have. Under the heading spiritual connection, there's a tool you can use called meditation, something familiar to all of us by now. There's actually a process called mindfulness meditation that made its way from Buddhism into Western culture. It's very popular now. It's been used uh, to treat depression and anxiety, and it also can be used for chronic pain. In 1993, there was a breakthrough uh, documentary called Healing in the Mind, uh, done by Bill Moyers. And in this, uh, uh, in this video, he actually goes to the University of Massachusetts and interviews a guy named John Kabat-Zinn, who did groundbreaking work teaching what he calls mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR, to a group of people with chronic pain who the doctors had given up on. And he showed how to use this, uh, this practice to, to help the people become not resisting their pain or pushing away, but be, be more accepting of it and being more non-judgmental judgmental towards the pain and just more allowing it to be, and somehow that diminished the experience of the pain itself. So there are these classes now taught around the country in MBSR. If you put that in Google, you'll see them. They've become uh, quite part of the mainstream. And I, if you're dealing with pain, I really recommend you try one of these classes out. Or if you have some form of your own meditation that you use that works, just go for that. Finally, you can always join or look for a uh, support group for chronic pain. Uh, these support groups work very uh, much in the same way that a depression support group works or a cancer support group works. It brings together people who are going through the same thing, the same experience, so that they can give, give and receive support and help each other in ways that ordinarily wouldn't be possible. Now, this is really important because in chronic pain, like depression, uh, doctors can misunderstand these things. They can say, well, well you know, I don't see any cause. What are you, what are you, you know, complaining about? Uh, they can think of you as maybe a malingerer. So can your friends and family. So it's important to be around other people going through the same thing who really understand what you're struggling with. If you look on the screen, you'll see a link to the American Chronic Pain Association and their support group network. So as you can see, there are many, many tools uh, that can help you with chronic pain. The key is to gather a few, make them your own, and practice them. And if you do so, uh, you'll be able to work on your depression and your chronic pain at the same time and bring healing to both. This has been Douglas Block. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you liked it, please, please give it a like, uh, or you can write your comments in the comments section, or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. I wanted to let you know that I have a coaching session uh, service, long distance coaching service. You can see the URL on the screen. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, just click on my photo in the closing credits and you'll be taken to the subscribe page. And finally, if you want to become a sustaining member of this channel, click on the image of Patreon and you'll be taken to that website. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.